Hi people, uh, I put my first how-to video out last night, um, how to electrochemically etch uh, a logo on your knife blade, and um, it was pointed out to me that uh, I'd, uh, I'd got a shot in it where some personal details were visible. So a uh, big thank you to Luke of uh, Richardson Knives UK for pointing that out to me. Obviously a real rookie mistake that, and uh, so I took the video down. and. Um, I'm going to sort of reshoot the part of the video that uh, that I've had to delete. I've also, I suppose, got the opportunity to uh, to delete another part where I had a, I think it was an eBay notification come in because <laughs> I hadn't put the phone on silent. So you can see it's a, a big learning process. All this uh, videoing for me. So, um, right. First thing, I, I, one of the parts I had to delete was showing my personal logo. I think there's a bit still left in but I'll show it again. This is um, this is the logo okay and that is professionally done by a company that um, I'll put the links to in the description. I think it cost about £25. Should be able to get many uses out of it. Uh, once you've paid the initial upfront cost the replacement cost is a lot less, I believe. I haven't, this is my first one, so I haven't had to replace it yet. But uh, I think I think the replacement cost was as little as ten pounds, something like that. Okay. Right. The bit I had to delete was basically showing the setup that I have for etching. So uh, I'll show you that now. This is the unit that I use. Uh, it's a a prior etching uh, power pack. It's pretty straightforward really. You've got uh, variable voltage. Um, I had been using it on 4 volts but as you'll see later in the video that uh, on this the particular blade I was doing that wasn't enough. And you have the uh, applicator here which is the uh, cathode or the negative. That's what you're going to attach um, a pad to and apply your electrolyte onto your blade and you would put uh, you would put your stencil on the blade first and then sort of dab that on you'll see that later in the video uh, this is a sort of work area workpiece area which is the uh, anode attached to the positive here so you put your workpiece onto that obviously I haven't got a blade anymore because I did it um, so you put that on there and then you start with direct current direct current uh, removes material from the the blade so it actually you know eats away into the metal to leave the pattern that you want that's on the stencil by you sort of dabbing like that and then what you do later on once you've done that is you flick over to alternating current and alternating current again you dab on and alternating current starts laying black back down some of the sort of black deposit into the uh, etch mark that you've made to leave something um, a little bit like some of these on here. Okay, right, so I think that pretty much covers what I'd, uh, what I'd gone through on the bit that I've deleted. So uh, uh, enjoy the rest of the video. Hello, um, today I'm going to do a video on how I do um, the maker's mark on my blades. Uh, I've had a couple of requests from people asking that I do sort of how-to videos so I agreed that I would do some and this is uh, this is going to be the first one. There's no right or wrong way I suppose to do this and I'm certainly not saying that the way I do it is the uh, is the best way and if anybody wants to comment and tell me a better way of doing it that's absolutely fine I suppose the easiest way of doing it would be to use a stamp a metal stamp and a press you know something like a 10 ton press which I guess one day maybe I can aim for but at the moment I'm using electrochemical etching I picked up a professional kit on eBay um, prior to that I'd been playing around with it with a homemade kit uh, and I'll show you some of the first efforts that that, uh, that I had. I suppose the easiest way you could do this, the easiest way I've seen uh, was on YouTube where somebody did an etch using nail varnish. They coated the blade with nail varnish 
and then scratched the design through the nail varnish, covered around the periphery of the nail varnish with tape to stop uh, anything happening to sort of that area of the blade, and then used salt water as the electrolyte and uh, a nine volt nine volt battery. Uh, to and I think they used a cotton bud on the cathode and, and you attach the sort of anode the positive to the actual blade uh, now I had to go at that myself and uh, you know the, the results weren't brilliant but if I show you some of the first efforts that one if you can see it's quite faint that was done using that method my initials were done using that method and that sort of combination was done using that method as well. Um, what I did then was I got some of uh, some of my work colleagues who have a, a laser cutting machine to laser cut a logo into some plastic, some fairly thin plastic uh, and it, they basically cut through the plastic completely so that there was a there was a hole through the plastic in the design of my my logo and they did various sizes the only problem with that is it only works um, it only works once or twice I used an old school power pack uh, that we were throwing away um, sort of varied voltages and things like that um, and what did I, I made my, my, my own sort of that's all rusted up now my own sort of stamp to to hold the, the logo underneath <coughs> I put one of those makeup pads on here with some felt over the top and just stamped it onto the the metal workpiece okay so that's how I used to do it um, I've now got like I said a professional kit and what I did was I got my logo done professionally. This is done by a company called Ostling Etchmark Limited. Um, my logo is on there. Okay, so I've done that. I've uh, I've got the logo in the position that I want, and I've attached some tape around the outside to both secure that to make sure it doesn't move but also to, to protect the, the blade from any of the, the etching fluid. So I don't want any other marks on there. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to attach this pad. It's going to go over the uh, graphite block. That will absorb the electrolyte. This is the electrolyte that I use. Uh, I'll put a link in the description to where I sourced that from. Uh, you could use, but you could just as easily use salt water. The, the difference would be that if you use salt water, you'll get, um, I suppose, quite a, a clean etch in that there will be no deposits. It would just be the sort of uh, the colour of the steel. By using this method, um, by changing from direct current to alternating current, I should get um, a deposit put back into the etch to, to sort of make it uh, colour, well, black. Okay, so I'm just going to attach this onto here. I nicked one of my wife's hairbands a little bit earlier, so I'm going to use that to put that onto there. Uh, so I'll put you down and get that done, and then bring you back for the actual etching process. There's the pad attached. I've tried to sort of flatten it out. I'm going to just apply some of the etching fluid now. Soaking. There we go. Okay. Uh, right, so I'm going to start on direct current. So direct current switch on, 4 volts, 
pads there with the electrolyte on it and what I'm going to start doing now is just applying it touching it onto the stencil for a count of one and I shall carry on repeating that for 55 goes so I'll just start you off, I won't do all of them with you you'll be bored witless but one two three four five six seven eight nine okay so once I've done the 55 I'll then switch over to alternating current and what that should start doing is uh, depositing uh, a layer back into the into the uh, logo that would give it the sort of contrast and the darkness so I'll do another 55 on that and then bring you back okay so that's now complete so what I'm going to do next is carefully remove the stencil it will look a mess at this stage okay so at this stage it looks a bit like that uh, I'm going to apply some neutralizer to that Okay, so what I'm going to do now is wipe that down and then start to go over that with um, some sandpaper to clean it up. So I'll just go and do that and then show you the finished thing. Okay, so what I've done is I've clamped the knife down, I've put some 3-in-1 oil on, I've got some 800 grit paper, which is what I finished the flats to. Um, I'm just going to carefully go over. Well, wouldn't you know it, the one time I decide I'm going to uh, make a how-to video, the uh, the etch doesn't come out the way I would have wanted it to. Um, I don't know why, I don't know why. Different steel, um, it is uh, old stock Sheffield steel this, um, different to what I've been using previously, it just seems to behave differently. Anyway, I up the voltage to 6 volts and did a little bit more it's a risky strategy because I had to line the uh, I had to line the stencil up as carefully as I could it's come out reasonably well um, not, not as crisp as I normally get it but I thought about not bothering showing this video but you know these things happen don't they so it's, it's real life doesn't matter in a way because this is a new model uh, I always keep the first of any new model and uh, this will be good for a test knife for myself so um, there's the logo Perhaps see that the the claws especially haven't come out quite as neatly and as crisply as they normally do but 
the process is the same that I do. I'll have to either stay on the 4 volts and just go up to 70 or 80 dabs or possibly try the 6 volts um, next time and uh, try the 50 volts. But there's the process. What I'll do is I'll see if I've got some photos of some of my previous logos that came out perhaps a little bit better to look at at the end. Anyway, I hope you found that um, useful in, in some way. Like I say, you don't need this kind of equipment. You can do it very simply with something like a 9 volt battery or a car charger and you can do it with salt. I may try that next time actually. It seems to give quite a nice finish uh, from what I've seen on other, other knife makers videos. Okay, bye for now.